Hello there, Pickens v. Wesleyan Church family and friends, and welcome to this week's version of What's What for the week of September 27th, uh, 2020. Uh, we've had a pretty good week. Uh, we had a great Sunday last Sunday for our missions weekend. Our speakers came and really challenged us and reminded us of our purpose and our calling to share the gospel locally and around the world. And it was just a very good Sunday to help us refocus our hearts on our involvement in missions. We challenged the church with faith promise and uh, your commitments to help support our missions this year. And that missions goal is $29,620. And as of last Sunday, the commitments from last Sunday total $15,060. And we do know that we sent a, a good number of our um, commitment cards to folks in the mail. And then there were also some of you that needed just a little bit more time to pray about and think about your commitment. So what we would like to ask you to do is if you would uh, take time this week to get those cards filled out and either drop them by the church, bring them with you to church on Sunday to either service or just simply mail them back directly to us. And we will keep you updated on our uh, total amount for faith promise. I do ask that on the commitment card, it asks for the amount that you're giving. If you could put the total amount that you plan to give, that will really help us know uh, exactly because some of you are putting a weekly amount and sometimes it's a little bit more. And so we don't know if that's your total amount or if you plan to give that each week. So put the total amount first and then underneath you can mark how you plan to give. Also, Lyle Jacks is on our missions committee and she does a great job staying connected with our Wesleyan Global Partner missionaries. And so we just want to mention to you that uh, we mentioned it last weekend in church, that if you would like to receive some of the newsletters from our missionaries and stay updated with what they're doing, she uh, has set up a specific email address. It's pvwcmissions at gmail.com. If you will email Lyle at that address, she would be happy to forward you any of the newsletters or all of the newsletters if you would like to stay in touch with what's going on with our missionaries. A few things happening this weekend. Uh, tomorrow on Saturday the 26th at 11 a.m., we'll be having the memorial service for Bob Pertlewitz. And I would just ask that you continue to keep Heidi and Stacy and Landon who attend our church and their son Jason who's traveled to be here with the family and all those who are attending that just keep them in your prayers as we go through the service tomorrow and remember Bob and for the family as they're grieving and go through this process. Also tomorrow at the same time at 11 a.m. at Alive Wesleyan is our district ordination service and we're very proud of Pastor Sherry who will be ordained tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. during that service. And this is quite a process for a Wesleyan pastor. You have to finish all of your education. You have to serve in a Wesleyan church for two years, which she has done with Pickens View, and then you are actually ordained. On Sunday morning, after each of the services, we're going to be having a time outside, a reception time for Pastor Sherry so that you can stop by and congratulate her and let her know how proud you are of her. We have a note of thanks today from the Love family, and here's what they wrote to us. Thank you to our church family. We are humbled that you thought of us and joined in celebrating baby Xander. He is such a joy and Fenn is proving to be a great big brother. We miss getting uh, to fellowship with you all and look forward to being back. Much love, Liz, Stephen II, Fenn, and Xander love. Operation Christmas Child isn't too far away. As you know, we have to think pretty far ahead to get these uh, shoe boxes together so that they can be distributed around the world. So in October, the first weekend of October, the shoe boxes will be available in the front foyer of the church. The youth will be assembling those and you can pick them up uh, starting in October. Just be aware that our shoe box Sunday for Pickens View is November 15th. And that is the Sunday that they must be returned to the church uh, so that we can get them delivered to the collection uh, site. And so plan to be a part of that. In each shoebox will be the labels and all of the instructions that you need to be able to be a part of uh, helping fill a shoebox for children around the world. Last year, we were able to send a little over 100 boxes. So 
plan to be a part of that missions project uh, in the next few months. We also want to express our deepest sympathy uh, this weekend to the Junior Bailey family. Uh, Junior's oldest brother uh, passed away this week in Virginia. So I'm going to ask that you just continue to remember the Baileys. We don't know plans yet and details, but um, this was a pretty big loss for Junior and we just want to keep them in our prayers. I've been asked to help share some information about how we fund funeral meals in the church. Typically in a church our size, uh, anytime that we have a family that's experiencing a loss or a death in their immediate family, the church likes to provide a funeral meal. And typically that would mean someone getting on the phone and contacting folks to either cook something or donate money to help buy items for the funeral meal. We have set up a, a line item now so that if you would like to give weekly instead of waiting for a call you can on your regular tithing envelope there's a line that says other you can simply mark funeral meal and put the amount that you would like to give in there and what our hopes are several folks would like to be a part of this to where we can build that fund up and the monies are always there anytime that we need it so we're not having to call on everyone last minute if you're giving electronically if you're giving through the app you can also do that. There is a line item uh, marked for funeral meals and you can give online as well. So our children's ministries are gearing up uh, as we continually open up things more. We're trying to progress as we feel things are safe and um, that we can take the right steps with our staff, our volunteers and with our family. So starting in October, uh, we will still only offer children's ministry during the 1030 worship hour, not during the 915. If you come at 915, your children will stay with you uh, in the worship service. But if you come at 1030, uh, we will start offering baby nursery and the, both of the children's church for preschool and for elementary will meet the entire hour. So that means for parents, when you come in the foyer, there are two self check-in stations, so you'll need to check your children in, and that's based on your phone number. And once your kids uh, have their name tags, we're actually going to be starting in October, taking the children's temperature as they come in, just to make sure that everyone is healthy. And then once your children are checked in and ready to go, there'll be a volunteer on either hallway. Uh, if you're going to the nursery, there'll be a volunteer on that side by the restrooms, or if you're going to preschool or elementary, there'll be a volunteer on that side to escort your children to their classroom. We are still asking that parents and others do not uh, walk down the hallways. Uh, we're trying to keep social distancing. And please keep in mind that all children are asked to wear masks once they enter the hallway area uh, and their classrooms to wear masks and the teachers will be wearing masks as well. So also in October, we are going to start our children's ministry back on Wednesday nights. And many of our parents have been asking week after week, when are we going to start having children again? So we have to make some adjustments. Youth will be meeting longer. They'll actually be meeting from 615 to 745, an hour and a half. And the reason for that is we're going to run the bus twice on two routes. We'll pick up all of the teenagers and drop them off at the church at 615. And then we will return to Pickens Gardens about 625 to pick up all the elementary children. That way we have enough space on the bus. Uh, everyone will be, their temperatures will be checked before they get on the bus and they must wear a mask. We do have a few masks available if they don't have one, but everyone must wear a mask while they're on the bus and they're in class. So once we pick up the children at 625, we'll take them to the fellowship hall. We're going to use the large uh, fellowship hall where we can spread children out and put just a few at each table where we'll have pizza as we typically do. We'll go to our classes and then we will uh, dismiss children at the normal time of 730. Uh, make that quick trip back to Pickens Gardens to drop those children off and then return to pick up the youth immediately after to take them back home. So a few of you have both youth and children and I will be contacting you directly to give you a little more insight on how we plan to pick up your children. As a church, this has been uh, such a strange time during the pandemic, and it's brought a lot of stress and 
I'm beginning to wonder exactly how this is going to affect everyone in the long term. Not only are we facing stuff with the pandemic, but as a church family, we have experienced several deaths that have connected to folks in our church family and our, our hearts are heavy and concerned for those who are going through the, that additional stress and pain right now these past few months. Besides that, we have um, parents that are at home trying to figure out this whole schooling thing. Some are doing online school and um, trying to figure out how to best do that. Some have gone back face to face and those parents are some days your kids are at school and then they're back home for a week. And for those who of you in the church who are teachers, you are our heroes. And I know this is a very stressful time, but we appreciate too what you're experiencing and we appreciate what you do for us. Not only are we facing those stresses, many of our families are experiencing financial stress. People are being laid off or they're being terminated, are being asked to take pay cuts. So that is also a stressful time. We're experiencing the stress of what's constantly coming toward us during this election season as we're weeks away from voting on our president. And then each day as you turn on the news, you hear about trouble in another part of our nation. There is just a lot of constant stress and I'll be honest, as your pastor, uh, this was a strange time to become the senior pastor and to become the shepherd of a congregation. I feel the weight of all those things. And there are so many in our church who are struggling with health issues, some that are recovering from health issues and some that are just experiencing new health issues. And um, that weighs heavily on me. It seems like we, uh, because we're not able to be connected and together, I just have a heavy heart for our church family. So as we're living in this time, uh, even though it weighs heavy on my heart, this is what I do know, is that we serve the God of all creation. And I am convinced more than anything, he is far bigger than any problems that we face. Each week as I've been uh, preaching the series on how to handle life's problems, I've been convinced more and more that God is always faithful. And in a time like this, especially like this, we need to learn to lean more into him. This Sunday, the message is actually about relying on God's promises. And I know this for sure. Our God is strong and our God is steady and we can hold on to him and to his promises. So I wanna encourage you this week to tune in, uh, whether you're online, and watching on Facebook or YouTube, or if you can come to church Sunday. Together, let's continue to draw closer to God. Just know that as your pastor, I love our church. If you need anything, please don't try to go it alone. Please call the church office number. It will roll over to one of the pastors, myself, or our wonderful pastoral staff. We want to love you and encourage you during this time. Well, have a great weekend and let's stay connected. Let's be the body of Christ together and uh, we'll see you soon.